Hey guys, it's Paul from Where Nerdy is Cool. I have an Ultimaker 3 here. I've had it here for a few weeks. Let me tell you what I think about it. Hey guys, it's Paul. Thanks for watching Where Nerdy is Cool, where, well, we talked about all the cool stuff that's really nerdy. I've had the Ultimaker 3 here for a couple weeks. I had a uh, Comic-Con, actually it was this past weekend, and I asked Ultimaker about two months ago if any of the Ultimaker 3s could make an appearance at the local Comic-Con. They said sure. They sent the Ultimaker 3 out and a couple Ultimaker 2s, uh, the extended to the tall ones, so I could have those on display. And I've had the better part of the month to get used to the Ultimaker 3. And well, let me tell you some of the really cool things about this thing. Uh, first of all, it's very pretty. Uh, it has obviously the dual nozzles and it can do multiple materials. Uh, as you can see from a couple of the items I have on display, I decided to download a couple of the models and try that out. So I have the Ultimaker drill that I printed out. Uh, I also have a little Pikachu and the Dragon's Egg. And I've also played around with the PVA and uh, uh, I did the uh, Seahorse print and uh, I've done a couple of little uh, uh, small prints as well to demonstrate uh, the support material. These were really popular at the Comic-Con. The kids thought it was kind of cool to put that in water and watch the uh, PVA turn gooey and evaporate and, and go away. But uh, let me name off a couple of the features here on the Ultimaker 3 in case you don't know anything about them. This is the uh, this is aimed at a more professional user. Uh, I would say it's definitely a, a step up from the Ultimaker 2 in a lot of ways. Uh, it does have uh, the same um, uh, extruders uh, as far as the uh, from the motors as far as feeding the filament in. Uh, there's a lot of niceties that they've built into this printer. It has auto leveling. It also has a web camera in the corner. So using the app, uh, also it's available in iOS or in the uh, uh, Android format where what you can do is you can load that up and uh, connect to the printer remotely and you can see what it's doing. That came in very handy for me. I had one print where the uh, prime tower had come off of the glass bed and rather than printing, I was forming a lot of wonderful spaghetti. So I was able to remotely stop that print, come downstairs to the, where the printer was, um, make the correction, add some glue stick and try it again. One of the biggest things that I was really impressed by with this printer is that is quite frankly, it's very, very easy to use. I mean. The auto leveling is, it really spoils you. I mean, if you've had the Ultimaker 2 or the Ultimaker original, you're just so used to going through and doing the three point calibration. And quite frankly, once you've done that and get the hang of it, you really don't have to mess with it for a while. But it was really neat to see this printer just automatically from the get go, starting a print, it would go through, it would do the three points uh, with one nozzle, three points with the other nozzle, uh, it would compare that math, and then if it was satisfied, uh, off it would go. I encountered an error message uh, on one or two prints where what had happened was there were some filaments that had dried up on the nozzle, and uh, it was throwing an offset. And uh, one of the, essentially if you purchase one of these things, one of the things that you'll learn to do is that uh, before you do any prints like this, you want to make sure the nozzles are clean. Um, it, it gave a pretty, you know, uh, the error message didn't look too terribly scary, but uh, it did let you know that uh, when it tried auto leveling, its math didn't add up. Now for the basics on this printer, um, let me just uh, go through some of the basics. What we have sitting here is 34.95, okay? And the extended version, which is a little bit taller, uh, that is 42.95. So these are not inexpensive printers by any stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> the uh, the size of the Ultimaker 3, the print volume rather, is 215 by 215 by 200. For us Americans and non-metric folks, that is 8.46 inches by 8.46 inches by, <clears throat> by 7.87 inches. So to compare, an Ultimaker 2 Plus is a little bit bigger at 8.8, 8.8 by 8.1. So what's happening is due to the dual nozzle configuration, for example, that outside nozzle can't go all the way out to, out to the sides and vice versa. 
So you wind up losing a little bit of your print volume if you're going to go with the Ultimaker 3. And if you have prints that are just barely fitting your Ultimaker 2, that might be a problem here with this one. Uh, the extended as well, uh, the extended is a little bit taller, obviously. Uh, like I said, this one sitting here is 7.87 inches tall. The uh, extended is 11.81 inches. You can all kind of notes here on the laptop. Um, the Ultimaker 2, again, is a little bit taller. The extended version on uh, the Ultimaker 2 is 12 inches. Um, so I, I think what's happening here, we're dealing with a much bigger print head and some other mechanics that uh, have kind of limited the space a little bit. Um, I guess that's one of my small gripes with this printer would be the loss of the print volume because I do have a lot of my BB-8 project prints that I was really looking forward to doing with the PVA support, but they barely fit in the Ultimaker 2 and they certainly wouldn't fit in the Ultimaker 3. So when I got this, my mindset was, I'm not sure if I really would have a use for this, but let's try it anyway. So let me show you a couple of the prints that I did. Let's demonstrate the good. So obviously I have emphasized a number of times on this channel, I'm doing the BB-8 build. And there's been a couple of prints where support is a real problem. With BB-8 being obviously all curved surfaces, we're running into situations where we're using uh, a lot of support material and we're trying to print very thin. And sometimes those worlds collide. And in this case, I have a print here. And as you can see, there's a ton of support and due to us trying to print thin, um, it's really quite a mess to try to remove all that. And it's gonna be a lot of repair work. So using the Ultimaker 3 and uh, taking advantage of the PVA support material, what we did is we made use of the PVA support and look how nice this print came out. And look at the bottom here. That's all the PVA support. Now, the con to this is it takes a very long time because you're swapping back and forth between the nozzles. But again, you know, if you really want to have a superb print with minimal cleanup and you just want to set it and forget it, this printer can do it extremely well. Uh, you know, again, I, I went into the Ultimaker 3 thinking this is probably not something I would probably use a lot, but after getting results like that and then dunking that in water, and this is the finished result, versus, you know, the cleanup I would have to do on the other part, it's really quite remarkable. So there's definitely some uh, uh, pros to that PVA support structure because, and I'll, and I'll show you on another print. This is a print here. This is one of BVA inside the head is a uh, mechanism that holds the uh, magnets. Now, the part, when it's printed, it, it, it goes down like this. So you have a lot of support material because it's slightly curved. And even with the best cleanup, it still came out kind of pooey. So what we did is we did it on the Ultimaker 3. Again, we have that PVA support structure. And then the finished result after sitting in water is it's, it's, it's baby smooth. I mean, no cleanup whatsoever. I mean, it, you, you, you throw it in water, come back in eight hours, and it's all, all taken care of. So... Again, let me emphasize, I went into this thinking I wasn't sure I would have any real use for this in the projects I do, but when you get results like that, <clears throat> pretty darn impressive. So we're talking about some of the, oh, I don't want to say it's the bad or the cons, but let's talk about, uh, well, <laughs> let's talk about some of the drawbacks that this printer has versus the Ultimaker 2. Uh, the first is going to be the small build volume. I, I wish when... They were putting together the Ultimaker 3, um, one of the topics that they, I'm sure they debated all this, but you know, one of the things as me as the builder is I'm thinking that anything I can do with the Ultimaker 2, I can do with the Ultimaker 3. Well, that's not the case because the Ultimaker 3 is slightly smaller. So for a lot of the things I want to do that just barely fit the Ultimaker 2, I can't do here. Now there's a lot of cool stuff I can do, but in the nature of my BB-8 building, the dome pieces and others, uh, that, that smaller build volume uh, definitely hurts me. And the other thing, it's, again, it's the elephant in the room, is the price. Uh, it is $34.95. It's $1,000 more than the Ultimaker 2 Plus. And I, you know, I think I'd have a hard time justifying spending that kind of money. But on the other hand, there are a lot of really nice features this thing can do too. The, the camera on board, the dual nozzle, dual color, PVA support. So... I go back and forth. I'm kind of in love, out of love. My mind is going, wow, this thing can do everything. It makes it so easy. And on the other hand, I'm going for $1,000 though. So 
you, if, if you're on the fence between the Ultimaker 2 and 3, I'm not sure I'm really helping you, but I'm just going to tell you that, you know, if you really want to have the dual nozzle PVA support, multiple color, the remote monitoring and stuff, this is fantastic. I mean, it's, it's great. The spool reader on the back, which reads the Ultimaker brand filament and tells the Ultimaker 3 what it has loaded up, I am not sure if that's my favorite thing in the world or not. I'm certain it adds a lot to the cost, and I'm sure for the professional users that don't want to fool around with retraction settings and the sweet spot for temperatures and stuff like that, you know, the folks at Ultimake have already sorted that all out for you. So I'm sure it has a value, but for people that have experience with the Ultimaker 2s, they, they might wonder, you know, do I really need this? And one of the other issues I had with it was the Wi-Fi sometimes dropped out on me. Um, I, I would have it on Cura for a few days and then suddenly it was gone again. So I don't know if that's something I need to fix on my local network to make sure that because uh, it's a DHCP network. So uh, I don't know if I need to do something on my router settings to fix that or not. But uh, just worthy of note that uh, when the remote monitoring was able to connect to the printer, it was great but then suddenly it dropped out on me. Even when I searched by the specific IP address, I still couldn't reach it. So uh, that said, Cura was a little bit wonky using this thing. When I was going back and forth between uh, one print core and the other, uh, this laptop is a, it's an i5, it's got tons of RAM and a solid state disk, and I found it was spinning quite a bit. It's still quite workable, it just there was a fair amount of hang time uh, trying to do things. So again, I'm sure they're fixing that with the next version of Cura. Right now we're at 2.50, 2.6 is in beta. So by the time you see this review, that may be resolved. The uh, other two things I wanted to mention, I don't want to go on forever here, but uh, the print cores. We're used to having the interchangeable nozzles from the Ultimaker 2 and Ultimaker 2 Plus, and also with the Ultimaker Original. These guys use specialized print cores, and currently you have the AA and the BB. Uh, one is for uh, just PVA, one is for everything else. They, they work really well. I didn't experience any clogs or any issues, but in the event you do have to replace one of these, they're $114, so that's a fairly good chunk of change. Uh, right now they just have the 0.4 nozzle. I haven't seen where they have the 0 0.8 or 0 0.6 coming out yet. Um, again, we'll have to check with Ultimaker to find out what's going on there. And speaking of dual uh, materials, the PVA does a superb job. It's, it's expensive again. They sell it in the half rolls, 350 grams for $47.95. The big rolls go for uh, about hundred bucks, $99.95, 750 grams. So it's not inexpensive stuff, but you're gonna find that that blend uh, works extremely well. Uh, so it, it, it's, <laughs> you know, this is kind of like falling in love, as I mentioned earlier. Um, there's a lot of things this printer does stupendously well. And there's a handful of things that you, if you especially if you're an Ultimaker 2 or 2 Plus owner, uh, there's a few little things here where you're kind of, you know, wondering, is it worth the extra money, you know, to lose a little bit of the print volume and then have all these extra bells and whistles. I can tell you if you're printing stuff that's going to fit the volume and if that's a sweet spot for you, this thing is going to perform beautifully for you. If you find that you're going to need a printer that needs bigger stuff or if, if you're debating whether or not you know the extra thousand dollars is right for you, maybe the two plus is where to stay for right now. But having said all of that, <laughs> I'm in love with this printer. I mean it just makes everything so easy. So. I received the printer and evaluated it and had it on display to the public for three days. And I can tell you that if Ultimaker wanted to give me one of these, I would not be opposed one bit because the things that it did, for example, for the uh, for the BBA dome top and other pieces, just blew me away. It absolutely blew me away. It did a fantastic job. Multiple material. I can't see where I would print anything with multiple colors very often, but when you need to, it it it, it works. You don't have to go through any crazy wonkiness, what have you. It just works. They, they really, I don't want to say they perfected it, but they're real close. The, the cost, of course, is, uh, is, the, is the big issue, whether it's, it's worth it to you. But uh, hands down, this thing is a very impressive machine. And if you can get past the sticker price, you're getting something that is it's UL listed. It's, it's got a one-year warranty. There's a solid support team behind it. If you have questions, you can go to that forum. 
Uh, you can also work with, especially if you're in the United States, you can work with the Fabricate team uh, out, of, uh, out of Tennessee. So that said, this, this is a gorgeous machine. And if you have the budget for one and you, you've been on the fence about whether or not you would need one, uh, yeah, do it. <laughs> so anyway, I've kind of rambled on a little bit here. We've talked about the, the pros and cons and, uh, you know, obviously the price and the features. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> we're getting towards the end of the video. You heard my comments and you're probably wondering, well, do I get it or not? Well, let me just tell you that if you have the need to print in dual materials, uh, you know, especially if you're going to do stuff with PVA support, this machine is fantastic. If you have a need to print in PLA with multiple colors, this thing does it marvelously. The, just be aware that when you are doing the uh, PVA support or multiple colors, that it's going to take a long time. So if you don't mind having the machine tied up for a 24, 48 or, or more hours, fantastic. I found that with some of the stuff I was running for BB-8, uh, some of those prints took 44, 49 hours and it did it marvelously. So my, <laughs> I, you know, I don't have a rating system. You know, I haven't been doing this long enough where I have a, you know, a one through 10 or five stars or what have you. I know Joel has the high five and what have you, but I'm just gonna tell you that I'm gonna give this thing a thumbs up. This is a really solid machine. It's a fantastic machine. If you can afford it and if you have the money to spend on an Ultimaker 3, I don't think you'll regret it. The only things I wanna point out is that if you're gonna be doing bigger things, definitely check out, you can download Cure as well, and you can see the print volume uh, of this printer. And if you have stuff that's going to fit within those constraints, this printer will not disappoint you. If you have to do stuff that's bigger than what this printer can handle, well, you know, you may want to, you may want to hang tight until Ultimaker releases their next printer. I don't know what that's going to be, but let's just throw that out there. So having said all of that, I think this thing's a fantastic printer, and I, I can tell you that if I could find out to keep this one, oh, I'd love to. I, I, it totally blew me away. I, I, I knew what it could do, and I, I had some expectations, but when you see firsthand what it can do, and you can see how well that support structure just melts away in water, and it does, it does take, it took longer than I thought, by the way. Uh, I thought this stuff after an hour would just poof, you know, just melt off. No, you're looking at about, you know, eight or nine hours for it to melt off. But still, that beats going through this and tugging and tweezing and cutting and, you know, the, the risk of damaging what you spent all that time printing. So I'll stop there and say that this thing impressed the hell out of me. And if you want one and if it fits the mission you're looking for, you should definitely get one. So thanks for watching. And remember, this is where nerdy is cool.